Minneapolis artist Rachel Breen examines the path from civilization to anarchy in a new installation of sewn paper and drawing at Conduit Gallery, opening reception this Thursday. Somewhere you think that someone is always trying to rip you off. Okay, he touched this burger. I drove out to the high beam, and I get fresh garlic, real cream, and yes, I bought the pepper jack. I knew that! I'm not going to eat something he already I touched. I paid for it out of my own pocket, Frank. So I guess at this moment, the only one who's being ripped off is me. There's a long history of dinner theater in the Twin Cities, but no company does it like Thirst Theater. The company commissions local playwrights to create what they call one-act playlets, and these are on stage or on the dining room floor, as the case may be, at Joe's Garage, and let's peek in on some of the action amongst the diners, talk with a couple of the playwrights, and meet one of the company founders on this three-minute day. chance to do the kind of theater I like that's like kind of no fourth wall and really raw and right there and kind of by its nature interactive even if it's not actually like you know <laughs> making people interact you're right there it's really liberating because there's no the only thing is that it's set in a bar it could be that they're you know aliens who communicate only through singing but they're in a bar so I love those kind of things where it's you have this one tiny restriction but other than that it's totally wide open men can make you happy and fat and take years off your life, but they are inferior to McDonald's in one significant way. Men do not change their menu or policies based on social or economic pressures. <laughs> Can't let being a werewolf... Latent werewolf. Latent werewolf define you. Thanks, Zombie Glenn. I'll keep that in mind. Right now, this thing that we're doing in Thirst, this go-round, I was actually in the process of developing the idea as a longer work, so this is a chance for me to play around with a piece of it, get to know the characters, have actors play around with the characters and see what I can learn about it. In the Fringe Festival and the miniature, it's sort of like, if you don't like it, it's going to be over in 15 minutes. And there are at least four other things going on in any given night, so you don't have to worry about carrying the weight of the whole evening yourself. You're always part of a really eclectic mix. Uh, it's weird, you know, I, whenever somebody else is around, I can't help but kind of sit outside myself and judge how poorly I'm doing. Uh, you need to get over that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. Uh, I want to hear you play. You always get what you want. Yes. <laughs> we all were talking about how we used to like to see bands a lot when we were in college and go out and see music and we were trying to create a, a place where theater could be more like going to see a band. So we came up with this idea of Thirst, which we got local playwrights to write short little plays, really good equity actors to perform them. They're about 15 minutes long and uh, then people talk and drink in between, kind of like, sort of like seeing a band. There's some serious ones. There's. I've been in one where it was like a speed dating type situation and every man turned out to be obsessed with Hitler. Having done this, it's a little bit like, like trying to learn to swim in the ocean and then a little bit when you get into a regular play, it's like, oh, there's lights and there's costumes and there's stuff. This kind of makes you jump in and just go for stuff, a little under rehearsed. I think you take that boldness with you to other things. I told you I'm subsisting mostly on roadkill these days. Ew. <laughs> it's already dead. Is it really enough to get by? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Ever since people started talking on their cell phones while driving, <laughs> roadkill is a growth industry, my friend. <laughs>